The Lord... Whoops. I got ahead of the bell. The Lord be with you. We sound a little sleepy today. I feel a little sleepy today. Good morning and welcome to worship on this beautiful rainy day. Right? We need the rain. Maybe? Yes? I think? I think? Uh, I spent all day yesterday, virtually all day, and a lot of the day before planting a vegetable garden. So my, my veggies are very happy today. And I'm going to be ready for a nap this afternoon, I think. So, glad to be with you. Um, thanks to everybody who is, who is uh, helping to make this service possible today. Uh, thanks to Scott Larson for being our liturgist. Uh, if you would like to be liturgist, just send me an email or a text or give me a call and we'll in, I'll invite you to do it. Um, that's it's kind of interesting to be here in the empty sanctuary, isn't it? But it's, people always say how nice it is to be back here. So, um, but speaking of that, we um, the session is not making any plans right now to return to worship. We continue to evaluate the situation and feel like there are, are uh, a lot of factors that say, let's be cautious. We do meet via Zoom every two weeks, and um, so we'll consider it again April, uh, April May 26th. And uh, when we do decide that we will, we will get back together, we'll give a good three weeks notice so, um, so people know it won't just happen the following week. All right, so we'll keep you posted on that, but we um, pray that you are all um, continuing to shelter in place as much as you can and, and, uh, and keep, this, keep the, any potential spread at bay. I don't think there are any other announcements. It's amazing how few announcements there are when the building is closed. Um, but I invite you to uh, take, take a deep breath with me. Um, take a deep breath in and out. Multiple breaths. I, uh, my husband and I were talking in the last few days about uh, how he had heard that uh, we've all been running on adrenaline for the last, what has it been, eight, nine weeks, nine weeks, um, and we're running out of adrenaline, and that resonates with me. I don't know about you all, but that resonates with me. So we do need to just breathe deeply and rest. And as we breathe, I invite you to rest in this assurance and this reminder that in every time, in every place, in every circumstance that we find ourselves in, we are connected to God and we are connected to one another no matter what the physical distance between us and other people may be. We are connected to God and one another. We need a God and we need each other. So with that renewed awareness, let us continue our worship of God together. Begin with the call to worship. Come in here, all you who fear God, and I will tell what God has done for me. I, I cried aloud to the Lord, Lord and, and God, God was, was extolled with, with my tongue. tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God, God has listened. God has, has given heed to, to the words of my prayer. prayer. Blessed be God, because the Lord has not rejected my prayer or removed God's steadfast love from me.
intercession. The Holy Spirit, the Advocate, gives us the words we need to speak. Jesus Christ himself prays for us. We need not fear sharing our feelings with the one who abides with, with us and in us. With confidence of children of God, let us confess our sins to God before one another. Lord, Lord you, you tell us, us that, that if we, we love, love you, we will keep your commandments. You tell us that your new commandment is to love one another as you have loved us. We cannot possibly live up to this standard. We frequently neglect your teachings. We easily see others' faults and too often make excuses for our own. Send the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, to help us follow your instructions to feed the hungry, tend to the hurting, and love our enemies. In your mercy, forgive us yet again, and free us to love God and neighbor more fully. God is not far from us. God is closer than our own breath. We are not alone, not left to save ourselves. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. When we confess our sin and repent, the heavens rejoice and we can trust we are forgiven. Friends, believe the good news. In, In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Amen. you to cuddle up close to the screen. <clears throat> I'm going to sit down. And um, <clears throat> I brought this sign today. Actually, I just made it in the office. This. Help! Does anybody, do you ever need help? Does anybody ever need help? I know I often need help. This week, um, so we, we got another, we got another dog. Uh, it's been about six weeks, and um, we, uh, we decided he probably needed to have a crate, and we did not have a crate, you know, a kennel, and so we ordered one, and it came, and we had to get a size larger than he actually needed because they're out of stock, and it arrived, and it was this big package, and Teddy was outside playing basketball when it arrived, and he came in and said, it's here, it's here, and so we needed, I need, uh, Teddy needed my help and I needed Teddy's help to bring it into the house, right? Sometimes there are jobs that we just, we just, it takes more than one person to do. Um, I know sometimes I'll be in the middle of doing a task and, and I need something else and like, especially gardening, my hands are dirty and so I'll say, hey Jim or Teddy, can you bring me whatever it is I need, a pair of scissors or a scoop or something. And, um, and, they, and they do that for me. And then maybe, you know, sometimes when it's a help, it's really not, it's more of a quiet thing. It's more because we're feeling, I don't know, sad or just a little down. And we just, um, and oftentimes we don't cry out for help, but there are people who come alongside us anyway and sit with us if we just want to sit, maybe watch a funny show with us. 
laugh with us, or listen, just, just listen if, if we just need to talk about it, right? There are people who are willing to help, there are people who are willing to come alongside us, and it just feels good. It's one of the, the great things about, about being human is having other people um, to help us and, and be there for us. And um, I was thinking this week, and we're talking this week, about how God does this for us, too. Now, very often, God uses other people. I absolutely believe that, that, uh, that, that God uses other people to come in and, and help us. But sometimes, sometimes, God just helps us um, in ways that we can't see, but we can just feel, right? And we can't even say, I am abs- this is what happened exactly. Right, because we just—it's it's kind of almost beyond us, and we call this the Holy Spirit. We can't see the Holy Spirit; it moves around us, it moves within us, it moves out in the world. Um, but uh, and I, when I was growing up, I really didn't understand the Holy Spirit. When I was growing up, we called it the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but um, but I want to—I want to give a few examples. I think of where maybe it 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 might be happening for you. Like sometimes if you're working on something and you get really frustrated and you go, ah, I can't get this. Does anybody, does anybody else do this? Where you express like, I don't know what to do. And you express that. And then it's like an answer, like seconds later or minutes later, or maybe, you know, an hour later comes floating into your brain. Has anybody else experienced this? Okay, I hope, I hope you guys are raising your hand at home. So sometimes just like, like putting it out into the universe <laughs> brings help. And I think that could be the Holy Spirit. Um, I've also felt it when I just, you know, I just, like I, I don't know what to do. And I just go, oh God, please help. And sometimes I will go on and I will just kind of pray out loud to God. Or, or I'll, write a, I'll write a prayer in my journal. But I can, I feel like someone is listening. I feel like something, someone is listening. And that feeling that I am not alone, that God is with me, that also is the Holy Spirit. And I am so grateful for that gift as well. Um, because just as I need people to remind me that I'm not alone, I also need that connection with God to feel um, centered in myself and to feel feel whole and okay. So I just want to encourage you this week, kids. um, It's good to ask for help. We need to ask for help. So maybe you need to ask for help um, from your family members or whoever it is that you are, you find yourself with. But I also invite you to ask for help or just to, just to reach out to God and say, God, just please be with me. Help me to know that you are there. Try, try talking to God. I used to say prayers to God at night after, after the lights were out and I would, I, would, I would just kind of talk to God. I used to, or I would talk to God as I walked home from school, which obviously we're not doing right now. But there, and you may actually have a hard time finding time to be alone. Anyone? Anyone? Um, that's okay. That's okay. Maybe go out in the yard, something like that. But I hope that you will ask for help this week. And even more than that, I hope that you will feel other people and the Holy Spirit come alongside you. Okay, Uh, let's pray the pretzel prayer. And we're going to go back to the old pretzel prayer, because I really like it. May the Lord Lord watch watch between me and thee while we're absent. One from another. One from another. Amen. Amen. I miss you guys. We all miss you. And um, we hope you are staying well and healthy and uh, learning new things and um, making the best of it. Okay. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
So just a reminder that um, while we are in the season of Easter, which is that uh, liturgically speaking is the time period between Easter and the story of the resurrection and Pentecost Sunday, which is May 31st, so just two weeks away. Um, I, and this is a time period obviously after the resurrection. We are right now in a series of readings that are, um, that are before the resurrection, before the crucifixion. Um, we are having readings uh, last week, this week, and, I, and next week from the farewell discourse from the Gospel of John. Um, this is, a, is a, a John chapter 13 through 17, is known as the farewell discourse. Fun fact, when I was a kid sitting in the pew uh, making time pass, I would take the Bible and I would flip through the pages. We had the red letters, Jesus, the words of Jesus printed in red, and I would always try to find the pages where it was all red. That was the farewell discourse, because <laughs> Jesus talks for five straight chapters. Anyway, that really didn't have anything to do with anything. Um, but in that farewell discourse, Jesus is kind of preparing his disciples for what's going to happen next. And what's going to happen next, of course, he's warned them, is he's going to be arrested. Uh, one of them's going to betray him, right? Peter's going to deny him, just all of these things. So the disciples are, uh, and that he's going to go away. Uh, and the disciples are, are, are distressed. Um, they're confused. They're anxious um, about everything that he's telling them. He knows that, so Jesus seeks to offer them some comfort and some hope for the days ahead, so the years, the time ahead. So I invite you to listen now for God's word to you. The reading is from John 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the spirit of truth, whom the world can't receive because it, it neither sees him nor recognizes him. You know him because he lives with you and will be with you. I won't leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whomever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So how are you doing today? How was this week for you? Uh, I, I feel like so much happens every week, it's hard to keep track of. Um, things are opening up in Iowa, and people are having to make the decisions about whether they are, uh, businesses are having to make the decisions about if they're going to open up too, is it, is it really safe? Um, all of those things. It's hard. It's hard. And school is coming to an end. I know in our house, uh, uh, yeah, learning at home has been challenging. Um, so we're, yeah, it's just, it's getting, it's, 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 it's tough. It just is. Um, I did a lot of gardening this week. We got a uh, delivery of soil. We've had these raised beds um, that Jim and I built. Okay, Jim built. I didn't build them. I went with him to the store to buy the wood, but I did not actually build them. So we've, so we've had these raised beds that have been up since last April, but they've been empty. They haven't had any soil. And so this year, finally, we got a delivery of soil. Um, last year it was just too wet, blah, blah, blah. 
But we got the delivery of soil, so we had to fill them this week, and then I amended the soil, and then I got the plants, and I put them in, and it was a lot of work. But that gave me a lot of time to think. And one of the things that I was thinking about was how, you know, I was an English major, and um, last week I talked about a novel that I was reading that had been really depressing, and it kind of brought me down. Um, that was two weeks ago. And I blamed that on the setting of the book. And that was about, it's set in you know, a time of human suffering and misery and said, you know, you shouldn't, don't, don't read books that are depressing. Well, I, I kept thinking about that this week because as an English major, I feel bad that I told you not to read a book. That, that, uh, that was difficult. I, didn't, I don't feel good about that. And, I, and I, I was also thinking, it's actually a good book. It was a good book. It's, it's a... Ashes of London by Andrew Taylor. It's set in 1666 in London, um, just in the days, uh, the tail end of, of the great fire in London that destroyed so much. This was also in a time uh, right after um, Charles I had been uh, killed, then Oliver Cromwell came into power, and then Cromwell was defeated, and Charles II ascended to the throne, so there's also just this upheaval. And uh, it's a good book, but I realized, right, and I've read lots of books that take place in difficult circumstances that didn't leave me feeling down and depressed. So what was the difference? And as I'm in there thinking about this, digging in the dirt, it came to me. In Ashes of London, there are two main characters, and their stories are told parallel, kind of side by side. You know, the chapters switch back and forth between their voices. And these two main characters, they faced very difficult circumstances, and they had virtually no one they could trust or depend on, at least not completely. There were a few people that would help them, but they couldn't truly trust them to help them for a variety of reasons. I won't go into it. And their families were uh, a source of difficulty rather than help. They were left, these two characters, were left pretty much to face some pretty awful troubles all alone, uh, to find a way through difficulties all alone. And that, that I realized, not the setting, not the difficulties that the human beings were going through, but the fact that they had to go through them alone, that was what was depressing. And in a way, that's what uh, today's reading from John is about. So the purpose of the farewell discourse is um, for Jesus to console and encourage his disciples. Uh, last week, in the reading of the first part of chapter 14, Jesus assured them that although he would soon no longer be physically present with them, that they already knew what to do, uh, how to live, how to serve, how to be, how to love. And when they did that, when they continued doing that, when they continued living in the way, the truth, the life that Jesus had shown them, then Jesus and the disciples would be together in a new way. And Jesus would argue a more important way, a more intimate way. So in this week's reading, Jesus goes a little further into what he means. He tells them that his father will send a perikletos, that's the Greek, which is here trans in the NRSV translated as advocate. But a footnote in the NRSV offers another option, helper. In the Greek, perikletos means called alongside, as in the way a lawyer comes alongside a client or a teacher, comes alongside a student, right? It can also be translated as companion, counselor, advisor, or one who strengthens. But you get the idea, right? This is somebody who comes along. Um, I was, I'm just thinking about uh, Glennon Doyle writes about the sister joint um, in, in carpentry where 
you bring another piece of wood in to support another okay I'm not gonna say this right and I'm looking at my two woodworkers and there you take do you know what I'm talking about have you ever heard this sistering a joint you bring in another piece of wood to help support a joint so it would be that kind of idea too right however it is translated however we think about it um, this parakletos is a beautiful beautiful life-giving gift from God something someone that we all need in our lives right and I love the verse here when Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. Haven't we all felt orphaned at one time or another? Um, these, two, these two characters in the book, the Ashes of London book, they were not orphaned in reality, but they were essentially orphaned because their fathers were of no help to them at all. Um, it is a terrible terrible feeling and Jesus says there is no need for you to feel that way because I am with you the Holy Spirit is with you God is with you I'm in you you're in me I'm in the father it's like those those Russian nesting dolls right we're all together um, we're all together God abides with us. We don't need to feel like we are alone. Jesus also says, he talks about commandments, and I think commandments can feel a little more, more anxiety producing. They who keep my commandments and keep them are those who love me, right? And, and I think it can, that can start to feel like we've got to do the right things. We've got to tick the right boxes. We've got to, yes, sir. Uh, what commandments is Jesus talking about? Well, back in chapter 13 in John, just the chapter before the one that we're in, Jesus told the disciples, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So the commandment is to love, right? As Jesus has loved us. We ought to love one another. But, but what, what exactly does that mean? Well, these things are always open for interpretation, right? But one interpretation I ran across this week came from the SALT Project and this commentary. And they write, In this passage in John, Jesus makes clear that keeping my commandments is important, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing, he says, is mutual indwelling, this intimate life together with God. Keeping commandments will follow as the night, the day, from that symbiosis, right? Symbiotic relationship. Jesus doesn't say, keep my commandments and then I'll let you abide in me. Rather, he says, abide in me as I abide in you. Love me as I have loved you. Come close to me and live in me in love, and you will, by virtue of that closeness, keep my commandments. Love's symbiosis comes first, and everything else flows from that wellspring. Our good works, then, don't earn our way into God's love. Rather, their expressions of truly living with and in the God of love. And the Spirit, the Advocate, the Helper, called alongside us is, is here to help us to do just that, so that we might come alongside a broken, beloved world. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it, 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 and, and that is the point, isn't it? That God... The triune God comes alongside us, pours love into us to offer healing and trans forgiveness and transformation and hope and, yes, calling and purpose so that we might come alongside others, that we might come alongside a broken, beloved world. So in the last uh, decade or so, whenever... Um, there is a tragedy in our world. 
Inevitably, this quote from Fred Rogers gets posted all over social media, and you probably know it before I even read it, but it is. When I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And it is a wonderful, wonderful quote. Um, and it is directed at children. And one of the crit critiques, or I guess amendments, that I see uh, ar around this quote now, and I think Fred would approve of this, is that, um, yes, for children, we tell them to look for the helpers, but we adults, it's up to us to be the helpers, right? We want to come alongside the broken and beloved world and care for it and advocate for it. And, um, yeah. So last night, uh, I don't know if any of you saw this. I did not. I watched clips of it uh, later. But there was a virtual graduation for the class of 2020 that was, that was not exactly live streamed, but it was streamed. And uh, the commencement address was given by President Barack Obama. And as always, as, as, as uh, commencement speaks always are, right, it was aspirational, offering the class of 2020 a vision of how they might live into their future, um, especially in such an odd time, right? This is uncharted territory that they are living into. And I would argue that... Um, it was a vision that gets at this call to come alongside others. So I'm going to quote part of it here. Um, in that commencement address, Barack Obama said, No one does big things by themselves. Right now, when people are scared, it's easy to be cynical and say, Let me just look out for myself or my family or people who look or think or pray like me. But if we're going to get through these difficult times, if we're going to create a world where everybody has the opportunity to find a job and afford college, if we're going to save the environment and defeat future pandemics, then we're going to have to do it together. So be alive to one another's struggles. Stand up for one another's rights. Leave behind all the old ways of thinking that divide us. Sexism, racial prejudice, status, greed, and set the world on a different path. Yes, please. It sounds like the world I want to live in, the world God wants for all. And it is a message not just for the class of 2020. Uh, it is a message for all of us. For all of us to work toward and live into, maybe even live as if that is the world that exists and that is the way that we exist in the world. Friends, the Holy Spirit is sent to come alongside us so that we might come alongside a broken, beloved world. May we keep our eyes and hearts and minds open for the movement of the Holy Spirit in our midst, because it is there, it is working. And may we pray for and invite that work, that we may look for opportunities to be the instrument of that work in the world. Amen.
And I feel like we need to say, oh. We can't sing Old Hundredth without the Amen chord at the end. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just as a little aside, that was a hymn suggested by, uh, by Don Birch. Thank you, Don Birch. Beautiful words. And if you have a song that you would like to hear, uh, let us know. And if it fits the service, we'll, we'll put it in. We are open to your suggestions, including about what dances to do, but we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> First, we have um, our sharing of joys and concerns, um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I th uh, we actually do have some joys today, but, but I will finish up with the joys, and uh, we'll start with um, uh, concerns for um, Dixie Mackey's uh, neighbor Rex Cook, uh, who has had some big medical issues lately, so we, we pray for Rex. We pray for Dixie, too, and her continued um, healing, we hope, for the, the therapy with her right arm and, and um, infection. We just pray her body would heal. Uh, we think of Shirley Peterson and Pearl Martin and their families as they are both um, under hospice care. Shirley at Lisbon Rehab, she moved there from the hospital, so was in quarantine for a couple, for not quite 14 days. Uh, she got out early and... Um, is enjoying visits with uh, her children as they come to visit. They're allowed to come in and visit one time. Um, what a what a thing! Um, and Pearl is at is at Hallmark. Um, so uh, we just uh, ask for them and their families to feel uh, absolutely that presence of the advocate, the companion, the help for helper, the comforter. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray that same presence for the Palmer family and the Gunn family after Carolyn Palmer's death and, and Jim Gunn's death recently. Um, so for, for these families and, and so many others who are in grief, Lord, in your mercy. Am I forgetting anybody? Anyone? Anybody? Okay. Uh, Joy's. We do have some joys. Let's start off with a really big one, and that is that um, we've been praying for Joe Williams' grandson, Brad, who lives in an, an assisted living facility, um, and, and, and the home, the resident uh, home, that he grouped home that he lived in, they've been exposed to COVID-19, and I think five of the residents in that eight resident home tested positive, and so they've been in quarantine. One of the... Um, and that group of five did die. And of course, we continue to think of the family and, and, and his friends who miss him. But Brad and the other four, although they tested positive, they remained asymptomatic and they are now back home. And so thanks be to God for that um, and for all the, all the recoveries that happen. Um, Lord in mercy. We also celebrate Scott's grandmother's 97th? Yeah. 97th birthday. That's pretty awesome. So happy birthday to her. And yesterday there were some virtual graduations. James Cannon had a virtual graduation from McAllister College. The family gathered around the screens. And uh, same thing happened with Marissa Cranston from Kirkwood. And um, she'll continue on. But let's see, James is continuing on to the University of Boulder to do aerospace engineering, advanced degree, smart cookie, and uh, Marissa Cranston is going to UNI in the fall. We hope, we hope, um, and she's gonna be a teacher, and aren't we all lucky to have these wonderful young people? And there are others too, so if you've got a graduation story you wanna announce, put it in here. Those two didn't ask for it, I just saw it on the Facebook. Um, and of course, we continue to pray for um, our health workers, healthcare workers, who are so essential to us. We pray for um, other essential workers who are going back to, um, back to the, well, who have never left the store, and who are working long hours, um, perhaps putting up with disgruntled customers, um, getting into face mask wars, I don't know. Um, but uh, as other businesses are opening up, uh, just, just people who are on the front lines and who are, perhaps most vulnerable to um, being 
exposed to the virus. And just everybody who's making decisions about that, whether for themselves personally, for their businesses, um, for how they do their job, all of those things, just we pray for guidance and um, wisdom and mercy. And we pray for the leaders of our, at every level, um, all around the world, that they would uh, make good decisions um, and, and decisions that prioritize people over profit, uh, that we can find a balance between um, making a living and keeping people alive. Um, and give us, oh God, um, grace in our decisions that we make that affect others, especially those economic ones that affect others and what they do. So uh, for all of that and so much more, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And um, just a reminder, too, that um, we all have all kinds of stuff that we're dealing with. Um, and we aren't physically together in the same way. We're probably not having the same conversations with people, like, you know, sharing what troubles us with our colleagues at work because we're working from home. Um, that's not happening in a brief conversation before worship or down in over a cup of coffee afterwards, those kind of things. So, so it can feel like we're all carrying more burdens because um, we're, not, we're not able to share them in the same way, in the small ways. Um, so just a reminder that prayer, journaling prayer, um, these are all pray to God in the shower if you can't if you can't find any time to be by yourself. Maybe maybe we just need to have shower prayers. I never it just occurred to me that that is one of the places where we are truly alone and you might not feel weird about people hearing you talk. Anyway, um, but God longs to walk with us through this. Right? That this is what we're talking about today. The Holy Spirit that just wants to comfort and lead and guide and um, help us. So as a sign of um, our trust in that, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God has shown us the meaning of generosity in the beautiful diversity of creation and the overflowing love of Jesus Christ and the never-ending gift of the Holy Spirit. God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be a community that honors each other, to serve others with joy, to share our love and material possessions. Let us rejoice in what we have been given and in what is ours to give. All right. out the hips and the spine. Yeah, that was, that was a good call. That's a good call. Let us know what you want to dance to. All right.
Let us pray our thanks together. Ever, Ever present, present God, God with, with this, this offering we give you ourselves, all that we have been, all that we are, all that we shall become, and our desire to walk in your way. Accept our offering and our hearts, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. also be may God's spirit be upon you as you remain in place because obviously only a few of us are here and getting ready to leave but you get the idea right um, friends it's okay to ask for help we all need to do that um, and we are in a world where a lot of people are crying for help so we have a promise of the advocate, of the paraclete, of the companion, of the helper. Christ has promised us this, to come alongside us, to help us, so that we can come alongside that broken and beloved world. So cry for help if you need to, and listen for cries of help. Even in our brokenness, we can help each other. Even in our need for help, we can help others ourselves. And God is always there to help us face our trembles. So as you seek to keep your eyes and ears and minds and hearts open this week to the movement of the Holy Spirit around you, remember that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit are working you and the world around you and the people near and far to you this day forevermore. Amen.